you guys, welcome back to my channel. Today is October 1st, that makes it day one of the Gilmore Girls readathon. Since I'm not putting out weekly reading vlogs, I decided I wanted to vlog the readathon just so I can like, I don't know, connect with the community a bit more through that, I guess. Before I get started, I do want to just give like a quick little explanation as to why I'm, I chose this readathon to do in October because there are a lot and I could have gone with any number of readathons, but I chose Gilmore Girls specifically. I did four readathons back in August and I really burned myself out on readathons that month and then in September I took it easy and did no readathons. So I chose the Gilmore Girls readathon to do in October because I like readathons, I like connecting with the community through readathons, and I chose Gilmore Girls specifically because it just seems to have a very chill vibe. Nothing too strenuous, the prompts are like super chill and lax and I appreciate that. Also because I've been told for like half my life that I need to watch Gilmore Girls and I just never have. So I felt like this was the perfect opportunity to watch the show and you know connect with people that way but also get to connect with the booktube community through a readathon. Anyway that is why I chose Gilmore Girls readathon. Alright folks, so I am babysitting tonight. So for most people, babysitting a couple of sleeping kids means watching other people's TV and eating other people's food. Um, but for me that means a night of peace while I read my book and um, while I, I do drink other people's coffee. I am halfway through Nevernight, a little over halfway through Nevernight. I did not get a whole lot of reading done while my friend was in town, so I'm hoping to finish it tonight. If I don't finish it while I'm here, I'm also listening to the audiobook. I can listen while I drive home. So I'm gonna make a cup of coffee and curl up with my book. <laughs> because I am baking an apple pie. Just a little something special because my sister's home for the weekend. We all went apple picking yesterday and so now I'm using those apples that we picked to make a pie. But while I do that, I just want to talk to you big bit. Blah, blah, blah. Ooh, I want to talk but I can't, clearly. Um, just want to give a quick update on how this readathon is going. We are seven days in. We're halfway through the Gilmore Girls readathon slash watchathon for me and I have only read one book I finished it last night it was never night but I don't know if I'm gonna be able to read a whole lot more for the the rest of the prompts so I'm gonna try to make the never not the mm, words clearly I can't multitask here I'm gonna try to make the never night chronicles count for as many prompts as I can so we've got you know, Never Night, in which the main character, Mia, enrolls herself in a school for assassins. It's called the Red Church, and while it's not, like, referred to as a school, it is most definitely a school. So that counts for my school setting, you know, not entirely conventional, but it works. Uh, the next prompt was to read a book with a mother-daughter relationship, and the goddess of death in the Nevernight Chronicles, the goddess of darkness and death, uh, they refer to this goddess as the mother. I think that counts. You know, it's not, again, not entirely conventional. For a mother-daughter relationship, I mean Mia is a daughter, and she is building a relationship with this uh, mother goddess of darkness and death. Is this what Liv and Kaylin and Desi had in mind when they came up with this prompt? Probably not. Am I going to use it anyway? Heck yeah I am. I'm also planning to listen to the audiobook 
of Always and Forever Lara Jean. Actually, maybe I'll have that count for both because I haven't finished that series yet. Maybe I'll have that count towards a book in an unfinished series, the next book in an unfinished series, and also Asian author rep. But what's really getting me right now, what I'm struggling with, is finding a book with food on the cover that isn't a cookbook. So I'm gonna hopefully find one of those in the next week and, you know, be able to read it. And yeah, that's where we're at. So it's Wednesday, October 9th. Yes, 9th. I got like a decently early start this morning, earlier than usual, which means I have plenty of time before I have to go to work to like, you know, do stuff. I also made a lot more progress on the writing thing that I do yesterday. I wrote about twice as many words as I usually write in a day, which was super cool. I feel like I'm really making progress on that story that I'm working on, but because of that and because I got an early start this morning, that means I have time to just like chill out for a minute. So I am gonna watch an episode of Gilmore Girls because that was kind of like half the reason I was doing this readathon was as an excuse to finally watch Gilmore Girls, which I've never done, and I haven't in almost a week. I haven't watched an episode of Gilmore Girls, so I'm gonna go do that. But first, I'm gonna grab some breakfast and coffee. Lexi, ooh, Alexander Roslin. I love her. I'm only like the tiniest bit jealous. She has like the most aesthetic -y life. She has this awesome like at home cappuccino machine just like in her kitchen that she uses to make cappuccino and I don't have one of those but I want a cappuccino but I don't want to go out and buy a cappuccino just to come home and watch Gilmore Girls so um we're gonna do this the old-fashioned way <laughs> Gilmore Girls. Future Liz. Editing Liz. This is Gilmore Girls. Okay. Just to fill you guys in, I'm almost done with Gilmore Girls Season 1. Woohoo! I did some writing this morning. I'm about to head to work, but I am currently listening to Talking As Fast As I Can, which is the group book for this readathon. So I've got... Uh, about half an hour into it. It's a four hour audiobook. I'm about half an hour in uh, listening at 1.5 speed and all I gotta say is Warren Graham is Lorelai Gilmore. Like, like after seeing the character in the show and then hearing her recite this audiobook, I'm like, oh my god, you're the same person. It's like how uh, Nick Offerman, it's like how Nick Offerman is um, Ron Swanson. Like he just is and Lauren Graham is just, she just is Lorelai Gilmore. It's uncanny. So I'm gonna listen to some more of this while I drive to work. Then maybe while I'm at work, while the baby's sleeping, I will read some more of God's Grave, which is for a different vlog. Gilmore Girls update. Okay. I am almost done with Talking As Fast As I Can by Lauren Graham. I literally was crying in my car last night. I don't know if that's because like I was tired or hungry or because of hormones or whatever, but Lauren Graham had me sobbing in my car. I have like one more episode of season one of Gilmore Girls, I think. I don't think I'm gonna finish the whole show by the end of the readathon, but that's fine. I mean, I have time. This readathon is, I mean, it's, it's a readathon. It's about books. It's not 
exactly about watching the show. So I just stopped into Barnes & Noble to return my copy of The Babysitter's Club. If you don't know how salty I was about that book, you should check out the uh, New Release Book Club live show for last month over on Brody's channel. I can link that for you. It just was not a good but I mean like it had so much potential and I was just really disappointed so I returned it and I was gonna buy I was so tempted to buy a copy of Ninth House I'm so sorry about the sirens I don't know if you could hear that I was so tempted to buy a copy of Ninth House and I didn't because books is expensive working as a freelancer right now and living with my parents you know I'm, I'm trying to save money and I found in the past year a lot of the books that I've been buying in the past year I read them and then they just sit on my shelf collecting dust dust so I'm not feeling very inclined to buy books certainly not at full price certainly not $30 for a book unless it's something that I know for a fact I'm going to come back to time and time again so I didn't buy anything in Barnes & Noble which honestly feels almost sacrilegious but it's fine I'm really trying to condition myself to not like fall into that whole capitalistic trap all right i need to end this because it is sweltering in my car and i need to start driving okay welcome back to my car i am road tripping a little bit today i am meeting my boyfriend in his hometown it's about halfway between us uh we're gonna visit some of his family for the weekend it's gonna be super fun so i've been on the road for about two hours already listening to the twilight audiobook because it has food on the cover so that covers my um food on the cover prompt for gilmore girls readathon i've also been meaning to do a twilight reread and i'm also buddy reading life and death or i'm supposed to be buddy reading life and death this month with brody and Haley and rc basically everybody who co-hosted um new release book club last month we decided we had so much fun being salty about the babysitters coven that we wanted to be salty in group chat about something else so so we're meant to be buddy reading life and death this month but i wanted to reread twilight before i did that so i'm listening to the audiobook i have about an hour left but my phone's actually on uh, low battery so i'm just gonna turn on the radio because i need my phone for directions once i get to the town i need directions to get to my boyfriend's brother's house. So that's what's going on right now. I read one physical book and two audiobooks for this readathon. In the past, I have tried to cover all of my prompts with different books, but I didn't do that this time because I really did not want to burn out again. So the first book I read for this readathon was Nevernight by Jay Kristoff, and I loved it. Uh, I'm not gonna give too many of my thoughts for this because I am doing a vlog of my whole uh, Nevernight Chronicles experience with all three books. I'm halfway through God's Grave, so I'm not gonna give away too much, but I used this to cover my school setting prompt because Mia attends a school for deadly assassins, and I also used it to cover my mother-daughter relationship prompt because the goddess that these assassins worship, you know, the their patron goddess is the mother goddess. So I decided that that counts for me anyway. So that's Nevernight covered two prompts. After that, I read the audiobook of Always and Forever Lara Jean by Jenny Han. That covered my Asian author rep prompt as well as the next book in an unfinished series. Of course now it is a finished series because I've read all three books. This was really cute. I don't know, it felt like more of the same of To All the Boys I've Loved Before and P.S. I Still Love You. You know, the level of jealousy exhibited by Lara Jean and Peter, I mean, it felt really juvenile to me, but I also, you know, I only had 
one relationship in high school and it was a very short one and so the whole you know high school dating dynamic I don't really have a whole lot of experience in that field my relationship that I'm in now there's just like there's not a whole lot of jealousy so I found it a bit harder to relate to Laura Jean so I don't think I'll be picking up these books again but I am glad that I read them. And then the last book that I read for this readathon was Twilight by Stephanie Myers. This was a reread. I actually like could not get my hands on a physical copy. So I listened to the audiobook. It was good. It was the prologue and the epilogue were a little bit weird because they've got this music playing while the narrator is speaking and it's like the music was was too distracting. And I've since started the audiobook of New Moon and they do the same thing with the distracting music in the beginning and it's just kind of driving me nuts. Good news is it doesn't last that long so once it's over it's over and you don't have to deal with it anymore. So I used this to cover the food on the cover prompt as well as the complicated love interest prompt because I don't know about you guys but I feel like a relationship gets really complicated when your boyfriend wants to eat you, like in a not sexy way. Oh, I totally forgot about Lauren Graham. I also listened to the audiobook of Talking As Fast As I Can by Lauren Graham, which was the group book for this readathon and felt like just a highlight reel of Lauren Graham's life, which was super fun. She is Laura like Gilmore. I mean, I don't know, maybe it's because I was listening to it on 1.5 speed, but I really think her sense of humor, Lauren Graham's sense of humor, matches up so perfectly with Lorelai Gilmore's, so it felt uncanny. It was just a really fun read, and this whole readathon has been a really fun experience, and I'm really looking forward to next year's. So thank you, Liv, thank you, Mackenzie, thank you, Desi, for putting this together. I am really looking forward to next year's Gilmore Girls readathon, and I'm sure you guys are too. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, feel free to give it a thumbs way up and hit that there subscribe button. I truly hope that you did enjoy it. If you want to chat to me, you can feel free to do so in the comments or you can find me on social media and I will catch y'all on the flip side. Peace out Brussels sprouts!